A cordial greeting. Today is Saturday, October 18, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. At the time of recording this video, it's 8 a.m. local time in the Caribbean, where we are closely monitoring the evolution of a strong tropical wave that will be reaching the Lesser Antilles between Sunday and Monday. It's very likely that during this weekend this disturbance will be designated as Invest 98, and if so, we will have access to specialized model projections of track and intensity that will help us have a clearer idea of the forecast for this disturbance, since this morning there is still a lot of uncertainty regarding what will happen in the medium and long term. Interests in Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, the Bahamas, Cuba, Jamaica, and Central America should be closely monitoring the progress of this tropical wave. In the infrared satellite animation, we can see that the area of convection has remained quite active during the past 12 hours. However, it still isn't showing signs of significant organization, so we continue forecasting that it will not become a tropical cyclone before reaching the Lesser Antilles in about 48 to 72 hours. Also, notice that the intertropical convergence zone remains quite active to the west of the wave, meaning that this weekend should be quite rainy for Trinidad and Tobago and the southern Lesser Antilles. In this animation, we can see the sea surface temperatures. The tropical wave has already moved into an area where temperatures are around 29 degrees Celsius, and over the next few days, as it enters the Caribbean Sea, it will be moving over waters around 30 degrees Celsius. This means that in the coming days, we will probably see the tropical wave become more active in terms of convection, and a tropical depression could form within the next seven days in Caribbean waters. Reviewing the expected impacts for the southern half of the Lesser Antilles, the American model projects that for the islands of Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago, Rainfall totals between 50 and up to 125 mm are expected from Sunday through Tuesday. This could cause some localized flooding. On the other hand, windy conditions are also expected, particularly for the central Lesser Antilles, from St. Vincent to St. Lucia, with wind gusts between 30 and 35 miles per hour between Sunday and Monday. As the tropical wave passes south of Puerto Rico, it could also bring some windy conditions, particularly along the island's southern and eastern coasts, with gusts between 30 and 35 miles per hour. Now, let's analyze the different scenarios shown by the models. The American model run in particular is of great concern for the Dominican Republic and Haiti. For example, if we analyze the GFS ensemble members, we can see that the model insists two low-pressure areas could develop, one south of the Dominican Republic and Haiti, and another east of Nicaragua. This model is projecting that in about four to five days, a tropical depression could form associated with a tropical wave approaching the Lesser Antilles. If this scenario occurs, it could definitely pose a risk for Haiti or the Dominican Republic, while other ensemble members develop another cyclone east of Nicaragua. Now, regarding this area, it's important to remember that the American model has a bias toward developing cyclones in this region, and typically this development does not occur. Therefore, for now, the probability of a cyclone forming within the next five days east of Nicaragua appears to be extremely low. And although the American model continues projecting rapid development of the tropical wave, the other models do not agree with this projection. For example, the European ensemble basically shows no tropical development during the next five days. However, in about seven days, the wave's energy could reach southern Jamaica and eastern Nicaragua, where some members begin to develop a tropical depression. As for Google's artificial intelligence model, early this morning fewer members show cyclone formation within the next seven days. Those that do show development still display two scenarios, one with a track toward the Dominican Republic and others with a track toward the West. Because of this, the National Hurricane Center at 8 a.m. maintains a 30% chance of development over the next seven days, and the area of possible formation extends from the Lesser Antilles to Central America, meaning that a tropical depression could form anywhere within this region. Now, let's analyze the global model projections. Beginning with the American model, we can see that it is very aggressive in developing a tropical depression as early as Wednesday morning, south of the Dominican Republic, and it also develops a tropical storm near the eastern coast of Nicaragua. However, formation just east of Nicaragua in about four days is very unlikely to happen and is probably an error in the American model run. But what's interesting is that in about five to six days, the model has a tropical storm affecting the Dominican Republic. If this scenario occurs, it could definitely bring significant flooding across Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and perhaps Puerto Rico. However, it's important for residents of the Northeastern Caribbean to know that at the moment, the American model is the only one showing this scenario. So we doubt that this is what will actually happen, especially given the poor performance the American model has shown during this hurricane season. For example, in the latest run, 
the European model does not show any significant development over the next seven days, though it does develop a low-pressure area east of Nicaragua in about eight days. The German model develops a tropical storm south of Jamaica in about five to six days, while the Google AI model has trended toward showing less development in about seven days, it shows a low forming south of Jamaica. The UK model also shows a weak low forming south of Jamaica in about four days. So it's very clear that, at the moment, the American model is the only one showing such rapid development and depicting the worst case scenario for the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And although this scenario cannot be ruled out entirely, for now, it's the least likely one since it doesn't align with the other model projections. Still, I emphasize that it's important for Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti to closely monitor this tropical wave to see what happens once it reaches Caribbean waters. In the case that this very unlikely scenario does occur, the American model is projecting an extreme rainfall event for the southern and eastern halves of the Dominican Republic, due to a slow-moving system in the region. Its latest projection estimates rainfall totals exceeding 900 mm, over 35 inches, during the next seven days. However, such an extreme rainfall event seems unlikely at this point, especially because if we look at the European model projection, it shows between 60 and 75 mm, 2 to 3 inches, over the Dominican Republic in the next seven days. Although there is large disagreement among the models and their projected rainfall totals, the German model shows rainfall amounts between 150 and 200 mm, 6 to 8 inches, near the Dominican Republic. So, in summary, what can I tell you? The probabilities of development remain low at the moment because the vast majority of models do not show significant development during the next seven days, except for the American model, which shows a hurricane developing in about five to six days. However, if the tropical wave manages to develop faster than projected, then it could pose a threat to Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, potentially leading to a significant flooding event. But again, this is the least likely scenario. The consensus among the other models is that the tropical wave will take longer to develop, and that it will not be until it reaches south of Jamaica that we may see the formation of a tropical depression. So, there's definitely a lot to watch over the next few days. These projections will continue to change throughout today and the rest of the weekend. Here at Hurricane Info, I'll keep monitoring this closely to keep you informed. And to make sure you don't miss this content, I invite you to give this video a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click the bell so you receive notifications when I upload new videos. I hope you all have an excellent day. Later this afternoon or evening, I'll provide an update with the latest model runs. See you soon.